cheer her off, at least she caught the bad guy. I'm just I know waking I don't up today and done my job. No. I know I don't seem not a lot. evil, but we all... <laughs> Yeah, not I I'm not going to comment on anything, it's not my job to comment on it, no, okay, because no. I've got to be impartial with everything, no. okay, so I'm not going to give any comments. No, no, well, I mean, I deserve to obviously uh, get whatever's coming sentence-wise, because that's the right thing um, to do. And that might give me a bit of peace. The sleepy English village of Great Baddo, around an hour from central London, is known for its historic timber buildings, the early development of radar, and its picturesque canals. But in 2019, one home on Pump Hill would be turned into a makeshift mausoleum after one woman would take a violent opportunity to commit a double murder of her own parents and run up a cost of hundreds of thousands of pounds on her victim's credit cards, all while continuing to live alongside the rotting bodies. Come with me as we look at the case of Virginia McClure. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Stay where you are, show your hands. Yeah. Do you need Yep. Do you need yeah. Oh. The time is 12-12. You're under arrest for suspicion case. of murder against Jonathan McCulloch and Lars McCulloch. Yeah, okay. okay? Do you have to say anything? But it may harm defence. You're not mentioned when in question. So I'm sorry to report anything to do so with the evidence. Okay? All right. Your arrest is necessary for a point of... Before we get started, I would encourage you to like and subscribe for more crime, mystery, and all things weird on this channel. John and Lois McClure, born in 1951 and 1950 respectively, had lived in Great Baddow. John worked at Angela Ruskin as a business studies lecturer. He was a tireless educator dedicated to providing knowledge and guiding the youth of the Cambridgeshire University. He enjoyed lots of hobbies, with the particular favourites being golf and snooker. He is remembered by three of his four children as a man of jokes and laughter. His wife, Lois, is remembered just as fondly. Their marriage had built the life for four children and many, many grandchildren. A keen historian with an interest in the royal family. They both enjoyed travel with a particular love of the seaside. An ice cream and a fish of chips overlooking the sea with their family had been a constant source of pride and happiness. They had three children, including their youngest daughter, Virginia. Born in 1988 in Great Baddow, she was later described by her uncle Richard Butcher as very dangerous. This warning would become very apt in June 2019. From 2019, Virginia began to tell her family that her parents, John and Lois, had gone on long trips away. Their love of travel had got to them to go on far-flung vacations to exotic places. They were preparing for a dream retirement, but had just got a head start. When John and Lois returned, Virginia would tell family members that they had caught the flu and were bedridden by the time they were better, it was off on another lengthy trip. In reality, they were both still in their home on Pump Hill, encased in makeshift tombs as on the 19th and 20th of June 2019, Virginia had used prescription medication to poison her elderly father who suffered a cardiac arrest and passed away in the night after Virginia had slipped the crushed pills into his nightly cup of tea. In the early morning of the next day, upon discovering her father had died at her hands, but her mother had survived the poisoning, she began to attack the 71-year-old, beating her around the head with a hammer and fatally stabbing her in the chest as she sat listening to the radio. Virginia would later describe how she entered the room three times before starting the attack and that her mother had just stared at her in disbelief once the attack started. She then proceeded to drag her father's body downstairs to his former study, lined with academic works of university lecturing, and covered him in several blankets and surrounded the body with large masonry blocks to create a tomb-like structure, before placing more blankets and paintings atop the makeshift tomb. Next, she dragged her mother's body and placed it in a sleeping bag and wrapped it in several blankets before stuffing it in a closet on the second floor bedroom of the family home. Virginia then proceeded to continue living alongside the bodies of her parents. The neighbours noted that the curtains were always drawn and darkness covered the household. Virginia then proceeded to drain the bank accounts of their hard-earned retirement fund, spending over £150,000 with 21,000 of that being spent on online gambling 
as well as continuing to claim their state pensions. Suspicions were piqued by locals who were familiar with the couple, but alongside Virginia's lies, it coincided with the lockdown of the UK under the COVID pandemic. And as the couple were in their 70s, it was believable that they would not risk venturing out. She had proceeded to fabricate her parents still being alive by sending out birthday cards, text messages and gifts. The local greengrocer Paul Hastings, when questioning Virginia about her parents' whereabouts, told him that they'd moved to a different part of the country. It wasn't until 2023 when a local GP raised concerns about not hearing from two of their patients for four years. He had requested a welfare check. This was due to repeated cancellations of appointments for John by Virginia, who always had an excuse. This was very concerning. While the family claimed Virginia had manipulated, lied and fabricated stories to their whereabouts of John and Lois, four years with no contact purely from being on holiday or ill is extremely odd in my eyes. While I have no doubt Virginia hid her parents' murders, if I hadn't spoke to my parents for a year, two years, three, I would have raised serious concerns way before this. Upon the welfare check by police, she freely admitted to the murders the methods, and revealed the sickening way she had dealt with the bodies. I will now play the arrest footage. Please note that parts of this have been removed to consolidate for time, but the full video is available online. No one in here at the moment. Hold on. The police. Got it. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Hands. Show you your hands. Yeah. Do you need that? Yeah. Do you need it? Oh. The time is 12 12. You're under arrest for suspicion of murder against Jonathan McCulloch and Elias McCulloch. Yeah. Okay? Do you have to say anything? But it may harm defence. Do not mention when in question. So it's like you anything to do so in the evidence. Okay? Alright, your rest is necessary right, for a point of the Is there anything in the pop that we should know about? Yes, there Where? is. Can I take you to it? No, you can tell me. Uh, my dad's body is in there. Right, okay. okay. Yep, okay. Um, obviously I'll Where say, about your mum? Um, a little bit more complicated. Stairs, there were about five wardrobes. Yep. Um, it's behind the bed, but back next to the sink. That's the second one. I did know that this would kind of come eventually and um, it's proper that I serve my punishment so yeah cheer off at least you caught the bad guy I've just I know, woken I don't up today and done my like job no. I know I don't not a lot percent eagle but we all <laughs> Yeah, not I'm not going to comment on anything. It's not my job to comment on it, no. okay? Because I've got to be impartial with everything, okay? No. So I'm not going to give any comments. No. No, well, I mean, I deserve to obviously uh, get whatever's coming sentence-wise because that's the right thing um, to do. And that might give me a bit of peace. So, um, next bit is very hard to talk about. That's probably the most grisly detail. <laughs> um, so, on the... Um, ground floor underneath the stairs um, there's a few like storage boxes and things um, and um, in the middle um, I think it's in one of the boxes or in a bag or something um, there um, um, uh, if you want me to shush after this it's fine um, but every bit helps you'll you will find forensically it's helpful there's a hammer uh, I know I know I know, but I'm, I'm trying to help so you find everything. It's in the middle underneath the stairs. It will still have blood on it. It's rusted, but it will still have blood traces on it. After her arrest, Virginia McClaw stood trial for murder in September 2024. Anne was found guilty on both counts and sentenced to 36 years in jail. The judge sentencing Virginia... Mr. Justice Johnson said she span and maintained an elaborate, extensive and enduring web of deceit over more than four years. The judge said he was sure the offences involved a substantial degree of both premeditation and planning. He said that over a period of three months, McClure accumulated a large amount of prescription drugs 
And in May 2019, she bought a knife as well as implements to crush and separate the tablets. These were considered acts of aggression following months of thought and planning, said the judge. You think more of money than you do of humanity, the judge said, while outlining how dangerous he thought McClure to be. 